So they're not covering that. They're making it. That'd be great. Then we just find our way out of it. We would have an actual space program finally. <laughs>
itself, right? And we film the camera, so you put it on, and it's basically the internet of the battlefield. An internet. <laughs> no, 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 that's right. Now, you don't take that much imagination to think it's going to be in your contact lens in the future. So you don't even have to put this thing on in the battlefield. It's there always. So it'll recognize people's faces when it looks at you. Your biography comes out. You say another language. Subtitles come out, right? So it, you will know what you're talking to, what who you're talking to at any given time, because your contact lens will give you that capability, you see? And plus, if you're a tourist, you go to Rome, it recreates the Roman Empire for you, right? Because it's all virtual reality. You're walking in the Colosseum, and you see the Colosseum as it was 2,000 years ago. Next generation of the audio tour. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> The travel buses, as you look in your lens, you'll see ancient Rome as it was 2,000 years ago, as your car is going down the streets of Rome. Well, they need 3D lenses so you can look in that Well, this, this is better than 3D, because your left eye can have two different contact lenses. Okay? Okay? So immediately you have three dimensions for free. You your left eye and your right eye have two different images. Right? And remember, the military is pioneering this for pilots. If you're a pilot and the enemy or a jet goes underneath you, you're blind. That's why the military wants to put cameras underneath the jet so that you shoot information to your contact lens and you can look anywhere. So then you see right through objects. So if you're driving a car and you have a blind spot right over there, there's a camera looking at that blind spot shooting the image to your contact lens. So you have 360 degree vision. If you're a worker of making repairs underground, you don't know where the wiring is, you don't know where the walls are, your contact lens will know the geometry of the walls will show you what's behind walls. Right. So this is a form of invisibility. Without having true invisibility, you'll be able to see behind objects as long as somebody knows what's behind the object and has photographed it, you can shoot it into your contact lens. How about information overload? I don't know if I would want to drive a car if I could see 300 and, uh, 360 degrees. Well, you just shut it off, that's all. <laughs> Medical application. Compared to 20 years ago, yeah, I think of that too. Yeah, no, I mean, if you're a surgeon doing surgery, you look inside yeah. the body, yeah, that's, see? I see that. which is uh, exactly. medical, yeah. medical application. Yeah. So the military is interested because the soldier wants 360 degree vision. The automobile industry is interested because you have no more blind spots. The medical industry is interested because you're going to see inside bodies and stuff like that. If you're a prospector, your, your lens will see from a satellite down, you'll know where the oil deposits are, mineral deposits, and stuff like that. As you walk, the satellites give you infrared ultraviolet images of mountaintops, so you'll be able to see right through mountains. You'll be able to look for mineral deposits just by looking around. Hey, there's some keys over there. <laughs> Cases of it are enormous, right? Now, this is called augmented reality, which is different from virtual reality. Virtual reality is for children in a, in a game world. This is augmented reality, where you're talking to real people, real objects, but you know, identification comes out, background information. Actually, I some of that in um, some cell phone applications, where you just put your camera around the building area and take your GPS and the camera view, it'll tell you what like stores and all the information about where to be. They only sell glasses that have a camera in the middle and have the light. The, the very low resolution, but they have the cameras in there. You can have augmented reality already. Yeah. So this, but it's very low res. This, yeah. this could work kind of like the cyborg vision in Terminator. Oh yeah, I mean that's a primitive form. Terminator 2, uh, the robot had augmented uh -huh. reality, looking at you know John Connor's threat. Right. Yeah. 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 No. Maybe. Yeah. What size underwear do you have? <laughs> but you know, you see the applications of this. You know, yeah, that's that's not just that pilot, in my mind, consumers, but tourists, yeah. anybody <laughs> that needs to have big training <laughs> information will be able to download it. I'm like, you look at a restaurant, and you hold down the reviews of that restaurant. I got one scene of Iron Man. You're walking down the street, and you look at the restaurant, and you pull down reviews for the restaurant to decide whether or not you're going to go in. Right. When you're shopping, you'll be able to identify every single piece of grocery, compare prices with every single other grocery, and your glasses, your eye contact lens will tell you, don't buy here. <laughs> go, go three blocks over there where they have cheaper merchandise because in the future everything will have a chip in it and it'll tell you how expensive it is and you'll be able to immediately compare prices around the city. So consumers will like it because consumers will know where their best prices are.
that might be useful for space exploration too. I mean, if the astronauts go up and an astronaut breaks a leg or something like that, you could have maybe a doctor on Earth set his leg for him. Or yeah, and if you're an astronaut in space, you know, you want to see what's behind the panel. Right. What's yeah. on the other Fishing side of the satellite. panel. Yeah. 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 You'll yeah. be able to yeah. see through objects because there's a camera there telling you what's behind. Without opening it up, That's you'll be able to see inside of the object that you're making repairs on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the applications are, are limited. They are. Brilliant. What are the downfalls, do you think? What? What are the downfalls, do you think? What's the... Sinful manipulation. <laughs> yeah, well, I've, I've studied geology, so failure is one of the things you have to study all the time. Well, there'll be misuses of the technology. Uh, some people will claim you can use it as a lie detector. So you're talking to somebody, and somebody lies to you. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, yeah, they're pressing in the voice. Uh, they're looking right to the left. Or... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Face is blushing. Especially a construct is designed not to lie for you. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Once we learn to depend on it, then when it goes on the fritz, we'll rip up. Yeah, of course, absolutely. <laughs> like, like, in the old days, before cell phones, we'd just make plans and meet at a certain place at a certain time. Yeah. That's what we're supposed to say, well, when we get with Abraham, I'll call you. Okay. And that's when the Luddites will get more converts. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, in principle, any technology can be misused. Right. The Lund burglars could use it to figure out which houses right. are occupied, right. which houses are not occupied. In fact, they're doing that on systems. Yeah. 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 Burglars are already looking at Facebook to figure out who's, who's occupied and who's not occupied. Yeah, that's true. Everybody's getting, sharing too much information. Yeah. On vacation. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, why would you? Um, <laughs> no, any technology can be a abuse. But the point is that 99% of it will be for peace yeah. and productive yeah. purposes, scientific, exploration, all that can benefit from that technology. Watch TV. He is on TV. <laughs> and then you know, every time I watch a sci-fi show, I have to like deconstruct it, turn a piece of it off. You know, like I just want to be entertained. You know. <laughs> well, like Green Lantern is the next big movie. Yeah. Right? Oh yeah. And so then the question is, can you just solidify energy? Can energy be in solid form? That's the whole basis of Green Lantern, right? And you have to really think about that. That's, that's a very sophisticated question. Right? A good question. The solid light, solid sound, and is that going to be, is it something you want to try to figure out? Or? Well, I mean, I, I was doing the calculations in my head. Uh, how much can you, if you solidify light, how much matter is there? Very little. It's like condensing air. Uh -huh. Condensed air, how much liquid air do you get? <laughs> just a little bit. All of this air in this room is just, is just a little bit, right? So if I have pure energy and I solidify it, you don't have much matter left. Yeah. Right? Well, That's a good point. Like, just the Einstein E equals MC squared. I mean, the reverse of that is so hard to do now. It's not even, we don't even think about it. Yeah. Is that ever, like, in the book of taking energy and making physical things? Well, you can, you can solidify energy, but you get very little matter left. Very, very little. Like, C you need, squared is a big number. You, you need to make it to beam an energy to you to make, to make, all to make a giant fist to hit you with, it might as well just hit you with the energy. <laughs> There be some other aspect or, or property of the energy that would have the same effect as solid matter. Well, yeah. Well, you see, when the holodeck first came out, for example, um, Picard had mumbo jumbo matter, energy, energy matter. <laughs> and the said, "No." <laughs> you wrote a letter. Right? You wrote a letter. <laughs> Well, he's just a captain anyway, so he's not an engineer. Right? So then the question is, can you simulate Green Lantern's energy? Because okay? you don't need a holodeck that turns matter to energy and energy to matter. That's too hard. Right? But you can simulate a lot of it with that technology, goggles, and haptic technology. You can simulate that. So the question is, if Green Lantern's energy is very tiny when it turns solid, then can you simulate solid energy? That's a whole other question.